Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and some more blood and plunder for you today. We're continuing on with just a quick overview of the various factions and moving on specifically with our series here on the various English factions or sub-factions, however you want to look at it. And the first two we've looked at, again, the Caribbean Militia and the Buccaneers, again, with a pretty lengthy time frame of when they were really active. But here, the Pirate Hunters that we're going to look at today is really just a shorter-lived faction. So if you're trying to match things up historically with uh, whoever you're playing for your games, just keep that in mind. But 1681 to 1688 is essentially the main period here. So they have a couple of four special rules, as do all the factions, and they have some nice stuff here. So for these guys, all trained and veteran units in this force gain the Hard Chargers special rule. So that's a pretty nice one as well. And then they add plus two to their role to determine the attacker in the scenario. So as you can imagine, given their status as pirate hunters, this is allowing them to be a little bit more aggressive overall. And again, we'll we'll take a quick look at hard chargers um, at uh, one point in the video here, just so you guys understand that and how that works. Now, on the core unit side, you're a little more limited versus some of the other factions that we've seen. So it's mainly all English militia and sea dogs. Um, and again, I think is a list that's going to also help lend itself to some games that are a little bit more naval focused. So whether you're playing the uh, sort of ship uh, or sort of the um, like amphibious missions where you got you know some water, but really also some shore action, or all the way out in the ocean as well, that's going to lend itself here. But you do have a ton of support units. And again, we're just providing basic overviews here in this series. We're not getting into all the granularity of units, um, options, unit size, and all that, um, and going sort of off the deep end of competitive play. That will be for another series of videos. This is just some basic info for folks thinking about wanting to jump into one of the factions. So support units, again, you're kind of spoiled, though. You get freebooters, you get veteran freebooters, um, you get militia pikemen, so just keeping it within the faction. But then you have a f quite a bit of access to some Dutch units as well, so noticing a theme here with some of the British lists. But you get Zeleden, Capers, and then the Interplug. Again, probably butchering that. I do speak German, but um, Dutch does elude me. So, and then commanders, any English pirate hunter commander. You also have some special character options. John Morris, Thomas Sprague. Henry Morgan um, or Charles Carlyle. And then for the army skill, if some folks do play that, you can take obviously English lists here as well. English Royal Navy, Buccaneers and Caribbean Militia uh, would be your natural allies there. So we'll pause here for a second, guys. We're gonna just actually get hard chargers on the page for you and then talk about that and how that kind of benefits you as well. Alrighty guys, so we're back here and just to show you, so hard chargers really simply gives you a bonus when charging, right? Naturally hard chargers. So you get a minus one bonus to your fight test for the free fight action. So if we're just taking core units purely here with the English, the two that we get for the list, we're going to take those sixes and actually make them fives, which is, um, again, really, really good stuff. So um, just really as a, as a nice bump on your stats for those guys so um you can't can't complain about that again this is a list that's i think designed to be super aggressive but specifically we want to focus on the sea dogs for the brits so sorry about the page flip there but they also have brawlers so if you want to load up on just a lot of sea dogs for this list um and kind of forego some of the long range options although they have a way of getting into that as well but they have brawlers, so this unit can roll an additional d10 for each natural 10 roll during a fight, so you definitely want to take some larger units because you want more chances to roll those natural 10s, so extra hits basically, so really just piling on the damage, and again, you should be getting, with those bonus dice, a whole lot more hits because you have that better stat because you've, again, ideally charged, right? Now, you don't get to keep chaining this forever and ever and ever, but it is nice to essentially get some potentially extra uh, attacks out of that. So, you know, if you had a unit of eight, maybe you'll get lucky and roll like two or three on a charge. That'd be really awesome. So then that's a couple extra attacks, right? So the militia for this list, the core again, is not all that great. Um, but again, a five and the fight value is actually pretty damn respectable, but really again, the sea dogs are going to be your bread and butter. I think for the core here. So pistols and melee weapons, but you have some options here. Um, and again, we'll cover the units individually in a separate series of videos, but just want to point out two things here. So you can actually bump them up to vets. 
so versus the, the regular militia guys. So they're going to be a little bit less experienced. So having that option is pretty cool. Yeah, and they're obviously going to be good at sailing. So, but that goes without saying if we're playing on the water for that. So, but we have veterans potentially. You can get some blunderbusses in there if you want. Um, you could also go with stink pots, fire pots, and grenades if you needed to go that route. But interestingly, here the whole unit could exchange the pistols for firelock muskets for four points uh, for the unit, not per model. So, if you're taking a large unit and you want to add some long range firepower, in other words, just hey, we're just. We're going to ignore the militia completely and just go with sea dogs all around. So you could actually build in some long range to the list there. It is going to cost you a little bit, but it is another option. And they'll still keep their... They're only exchanging the pistols, not the, the close combat weapon. So when you get into combat, they're still going to charge hard, right? Um, but then also, interestingly, if you want to just go for a horde as well, we can downgrade them to basically get rid of the pistol, but keep the sword... And we're going to get a minus one uh, point discount. So we're really going to take them to being three point models. Now, interestingly, um, you can only do this if they are uh, not experienced or veteran. So it doesn't make sense to pay for the veteran upgrade and then try and sneak in a discount that way. But if you just want to run a maybe a unit of trained guys and then just take their pistols away. But, you know. You get like unit of eight for 24. That's pretty scary as well. So these guys will be nasty when they engage. And hey, if the dice are hot with you and you're rolling some natural tens on these charges, it's going to feel like you've got extra models in the list because more attacks and you're going to be hitting, right? Your fight's going to a five. So they're going to be pretty damn nasty. But that is a quick look at the Pirate Hunters list. Again, really nasty stuff here. So I mean, we're just touching base on the, the core units here. We're not even getting into the, the support options and all that. But just to give you an idea of really what some of the bread and butter of this list is going to involve. So um, those are our thoughts. But let us know your experience with the Pirate Hunter list if you've run those before. And um, just your overall thoughts on the Brits so far. But again really what we think here on these pirate hunters have you had success with the list how have you gone about building it have you come up against the pirate hunters and how's that gone for you and you know did you have success or did you just get um did you get demolished so hit us up in the comments guys let us know your thoughts on the english pirate hunters like comment subscribe we'll have more blood and plunder for you soon next up we're going to take a quick look at the english royal navy so especially if you're wanted to get some ship heavy action then that's going to be a good list for you so we'll be back with more blood and thunder thanks for watching guys